Rolling. All right, we back and at it. Um, like back two at addicts. addicts. You already know it. Um, speed up and feed up. If you're not uh, with it, hopefully you'll get with it. Uh, we back and at them again. Uh, now we're back from the break. I think we left off. We're still dealing with the mainstream. I want to move into something a little different. We want to go in a different direction. Um, I want to start feeling some opinions about, you know, let's get away from all this scholarly BS and let's get down in the nuts and the bolts because most people will not go look for these names or this, that, and the other and research. I'm going to be praying that they do, though. Um, but you, you, for whatever you, that's worth. Right? <laughs> and, and if they're on YouTube already, when you by the time you see this, you'll be on YouTube. So just YouTube some of these people's names, yeah. and you're good to go. And then you've supported blacks. Um, <laughs> um, I'm not a fan. I want to talk about the fandom. And in the break, we're even in the break, we're talking about the deitization of these characters. I'm not a fan of Black History Month. Period. Okay. Um, I understand definitely why, why Woods and them had to do that in 26. Nope, I understand that totally. I'm not a fan now um, because it's become a farce of sorts. Because I'm not so sure that, you know, agendas change. We talk about this all the time uh, in, 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 in the academy, you know. If you don't know, if you're not a colloquial fella, if you're not into hip hop, particularly with black students, not meaning we gotta be hip hop heads, mm -hmm. but if you're not understanding the lexicological, uh, the lexicological, here I go, ooh, mm -hmm. mouse, the lexicon, uh, and, and the reconstruction, the deconstruction of the language, the English language, and the context and the content thereof, you're not, you're gonna fall to the wayside. And I don't think what we're holding up as Black History Month, like you, you mentioned even at the beginning of the show, is really relevant to these kids. And, 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 as, and they don't even respect it as much. And people say, well, um, you know, I remember my father used to always talk, you know, people died for you to vote. Mm -hmm. People got hung and folks had to do this. You know what? And I understand that. But guess what? People are dying and getting hung, literally and physically, in jail, in the prisons, getting set up in the prison industrial complex, which is we can all say is modern day slavery. So they have a new type of idea of what their struggle is. And um, I think, uh, Dr. Ch shout out to Dr. Charles mm -hmm. McKinney Chuck over there at Rhodes. He talks about not liking to compare. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, people always say, you know, the baby boomer generation yeah. of black people told us what not to type. compare. They always didn't want, the civil rights babies don't want the uh, Generation Xs to compare our struggle. We can't compare, you can't compare your, what you went through to us, what we went through. And so it's hard to say the millennials should necessarily respect this struggle. Yes, you can understand where you came from, but they have a whole group of new nuances of struggles, right? So is it really needed as far as what we call Black History Month? And even the idea of the month further marginalizes the black or the, the, those of African descent. What do you think about that? I understand the thinking, but I have to disagree. Good, good. It's the implementation of Black History Month that I have an issue with and not the ideal about it. And so, and so going into that millennium, so for us to understand the boys and Washington. Mm -hmm. In that conversation. Right, I can put that in a very hip hop way. That, that's very relevant to where, like, even just how we come up with what's important, what's not important, and and so the or how to go get it value, big, big and pop, oh, ideological value. beliefs, yeah. right? It, it, but it's the it, it's more like Fifty Cent and uh, Ja Rule but, and Ja Rule because the boss was a nobody. Only person, only people that knew who the boss was before nineteen oh three was academics. He go on a book tour in nineteen oh two, not not a book tour, a lecture tour. Well, was that then became a book in 1903. So a nobody goes on a lecture to, uh, on a le lecture. Right, because when I say a nobody, okay. you, you got two, you got everyday people and everyday people are who? Booker T. Washington folks. Okay. Then you got the academics. I got you. And so he going around talking about, but he, in one of his lectures, he talked about Booker T. Washington. Mm -hmm. That kind of brought all the media attention yeah. on 50 him. Fifty-inch Jaru, yeah. If that's a fifty-inch Jaru, uh -huh. uh -huh. got all right? do another, yeah. Because if if Booker T. Washington people would have just ignored the boys, we wouldn't be talking about the boys today. And it really wasn't even just the followers of the believers of that agrarian type. Uh, let me get out here and you yeah. know five things hands. It's actually the fact that Booker T. Washington was beloved by white America and white government. So yeah, I make a name, he, in essence you're saying he kind of made his name, like let oh, me attack, kind of like Tavis Smiley, well, 
to like there are people that didn't know about Tavis and even Cornell West, particularly non-black academics and even particularly a lot of whites. If you're outside of the academy or that social realm where they become a social pundit, you didn't know who they were until they really set their targets on Obama. I can go with that. Oh, or, 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 like when when Boom the original Boom guys came on mm -hmm. and uh, the art they was outside the R. Kelly concert. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I was I challenged students to be able to tell me who those two people were supposed to be. Right. And most students didn't know didn't who know. Cornel West was. Right. Because he wasn't part of that system yet. Mm -hmm. And so, but but why is Booker T. Washington and Du Bois important to today? Because the questions that they were facing at the turn of the 20th are century still, mm -hmm. are yeah. still the same questions we're facing in, right. at the turn of the 21st right. century. And so instead of it being in your face, it's in, institutionalized. But we got to be able to have the language and history and culture to understand that. So the idea is still necessary. The idea is still necessary. How they implement it as far as it should be uh, um, um, integrated into and become a part of. But if American it goes, if, if it goes back to the its inception, so it reminds me of the, the the speech or conversation or sermon that I presented yesterday in chapel here at my alma mater, the HBCU Lamar and College. If we go back to the uh, original mission and vision and purpose of these things in light of the current realities is still necessary because the same way we're talking about whether or not black history month is necessary there's no question that it's necessary does it need to be possibly reconstructed in terms of how we engage it and what it That's means correct. then yeah but at the same time when we're not careful we seem to be reinforcing some of the same stereotypes. I'm not even sure I can support this notion of how the hip hop community and some of the beef between two rappers is somehow consistent or comparative to the beef between, even if it was beef, which, you know, it, I mean, it was some tension, but, you know, oh, it was ideological beef. Yeah, but, but, but some of the hip hop, but some of the hip hop, yeah, and some of the hip hop stuff is not just ideological beef. It, it's more of a, what they call a pissing match. I think he was just, no, just I think no. he was just juxtaposing a, a portion of it at how okay. someone got And it's so about, if I that finish the analogy, okay. it's, it's about getting on. Yeah. That's, and that's so if I want to become famous, you right. somebody famous to get on. That's, that's the thing. Which was 50 Cent strategy, so to not say 50 and Jai, when 50 first song that went you know, major, even though it was a mixtape song, was how to jack and rob all of the all of the hip hop superstars. So that's a little ironic. Uh, I guess you could say poetic justice or whatever. But go ahead, I'm sorry. And so that's that's what. And so, but to make it relevant, right? And so that's what's going to get a student's attention. I talk about the dope game because that's something I know about, right? Mm -hmm. In my classes, mm -hmm. right? And so if I talk about these things, it's going to help engage the students. To where they can then yeah, make themselves that. historical figures. But because as long as we don't understand ourselves as historical right. figures. Which is my argument, yes. yes. I, I mentioned this on Facebook. Exactly. If you don't respect who you are and your individual, your familial heritage and history, you definitely wouldn't suspect the totality of an entire um uh, your 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 membership to an, an to the larger group. ethnic that, group. Every, yeah. You know, that's that's easy. If, if one of the things you posted about earlier. If we don't even, we, if we can't even understand the history of our names and how we got our names, mm -hmm. right? From like the, names, somebody, you know, I was talking about names yesterday, but go ahead. Whether yeah, it's your last name, name your yeah. first Irony. name, your nickname, right? Yeah, right? All of these names have some. Call kind me by of my initials. Why? Cedric the Entertainer and this whole joke about nicknames and how somehow nicknames end up becoming something that we don't even know because we end up calling somebody that has nothing, calling somebody something that has nothing to do with not only their original name, but even anything about the essence of who they are. Irony, situational. Yeah, yeah definitely. And so black history, because I'm under the, when we think about ethnicity versus race, right? Mm -hmm. I don't believe, I don't buy into race. Social construct. I buy into ethnicity. Mm -hmm. And with ethnicity it comes a history, a culture, a mm -hmm. peoplehood, uh, an epistemology. There's a whole lot of yeah. a cosmology. Right. There's a whole lot more that comes with being a part of an ethnicity, and that's what we need to plug people into to, to say, because once again, I understand a Black History Month is slavery, civil rights, Obama, in that order, right? Well, but I think, no. Nah, and so we need to have an understanding there was an a African right, prior to right, right, that's enslavement. Right, that's right. And there's going to be an African, and, and if we look at historically, since let's, if we, enslavement for Africans started in 1442 off the coast of Africa. That's roughly about 600 years. I'm going to make it 600 years, although we ain't yeah. in 600 years. Approximation, I got you. 600 years. P 
people of African descent been around for over 10,000 years. Yeah. So why are we looking at the speed bump in history yeah. as who we are? As a writer, I got to say, everything the narrative has to start somewhere. Right. And that's, I think, and, that's uh, why. Uh, and, and, and two people in the crowd, and I'm sure people uh, uh, in the viewing audience will, you know, that there's going to probably be comments or uh, Jordan doesn't know he's talking about. Every narrative starts somewhere. I used to always ask my dad, who made God? Yeah. And that's where he couldn't. The narrative, right. the narrative ceased. Well, so a good story is going to always start somewhere. And that's the, somewhere. Which is what we have to pass on the history. So as we were talking about over the break, this whole notion of the moment or the event becoming bigger than the character, which in the grand scheme of things, in terms of impact, it is because it's that event that makes or shapes this yeah. particular character. But in terms of how we're going to pass the story down, then it ends up being more about the individual than it does the event. Here's my, here's my pushback. Well, I don't even want to call it a pushback. Here's my trepidation or tension around this and how we're starting to frame. We seem to be in our conversation now to some degrees reinforcing the same type of uh, uh, periodic series of importance. Just this, then just that. When hip-hop is, is, is emerging as... A, a, a link in the chain of African American history that cannot be ignored, but at the same time, we seem to be falling victims to this whole uh, euphoric sense of all you have to do is just use the stylistic type of language and then you engage your student and then you can draw them in and this, this, that, and the third, but if that doesn't have, it, style is one thing, substance is another. So if we want some... something about style. Well, this is what Derek was saying in terms of how, you know, you talk about this, you talk about the dope game, gets the students oh, in. You see, that, that, that's your, is that a style or is that a motif of your teaching? What, what is that? I didn't know that was a style. It's just part of Yeah, uh, it's it? really just who I am as a person, but, okay. you know. It's an experience, personal right, experience. Right. Yeah. But I, I got right. that. And all I'm saying so is. not really your style, maybe, right? No, because, yeah, because when, yeah, when I write my teaching philosophy, you know, that's not my teaching. <laughs> yeah, you don't, you don't say, look, let me make sure I insert the dope game right here. Asking, right. And, and not, to, not to suggest that this doesn't bear some <laughs> type of, uh, th this gives us some pedagogical <laughs> equity. Your teaching swag. Right. <laughs> right. Yeah, like swag. Yeah. It gives us some pedagogical equity. So people do get a chance to engage. But it ought not, and, and I say this, you know, as a pastor who knows several pastors who do not challenge oppressive theology. They re we reinforce the oppressive theology, but we add hip hop language to it yeah. to make it seem like this is some new so, revelatory yeah, yeah, yeah. stuff, which is the same danger that we end up with in the academy and otherwise, even in our household. Well, I think that's what experts and people that are, uh, you know, that's what they are. If you are a historian, I think that's what that's that, really that's y'all's job, you know. As far as a lit man, I ain't got no choice but to deal with history. I have no choice but to deal with oftentimes theology. I have no choice to. It, I am. It is rhetoric, the whole thing. But I guess that's the difficult part because for the most part, like a lot of times, like man, somebody's a historian. Oh, yeah, I study history, but <laughs> y'all, a real historian is constantly trying to dig back. Is something past the number one, right? Mm -hmm. I'm no mathematician, but there are things. You know, there's there's degrees. You can get to zero degrees, but then there's things. There's a negative, right? There's things behind that, and that's what y'all's job is. Real historians do that. Like that's why I really respect you know archaeologists, right? You're they're historians. They're really you know or anthropologists. Y'all are going places that haven't been gone to go try to. So it won't. So we won't necessarily have to have, you know, a reinforcement of something. And then even when you know, even then you'd have to get back. We'll never get back to the beginning of where things are. I think that's what the task that you guys yeah. have to and, do. And let me say what history is. History is an interpretation. Yeah. Exactly. And yeah. so all of, of history yeah. is an interpretation. Yeah. Yeah. And that's why we have over 5,000 books on the Civil War. Yeah. Why uh -huh. it started. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Right? So when we understand and, and, and when we look at the academy, who is in the academy, who teaches in the academy, mm -hmm. are usually people that come from the middle class and upper class. Mm -hmm. and so that, White and that, black, yeah. And that's the reason why most people in the academy are going to side with the boys over Washington. Mm -hmm. I'm a Washingtonian. Mm -hmm. But most people in the academy are going to see and think about Washington totally different than me. Mm -hmm. Right? And so in that sense... And so when we, when we think about the academy, the academy is not a place... And so it's not creating this dogmatic... You know, space for the, what you was calling style. Yeah, just right? this particular type of style. It, it, it's, it's because the people that you you're in. What I'm trying to do is be an activist, uh, and I got to give it out to my my homeboy Kokai and uh, Atlanta and Dr. Mose and these kind of people. We call it revolutionary pimping, right? And so my job is to pimp this revolution, 
right? Any way that I can to make that connection because I'm an activist scholar as opposed to a scholar who might show up to some activism. And so all of my scholarship of is about activism. Okay. And this and, and and your scholarship is activism. Right. Opposed to some people using that right. scholarship and then they show up at different protests and whatever and say, I'm an activist and you're not really. Right. I, I, that's so ironic that you said that. I was thinking about it. I was uh, watching a clip of Sonia Sanchez and I've been thinking about you know some work that Alice Walker did. Uh, and particularly a lot of the black uh, lit people that I follow. Ishmael Reed, you know, people I look at like I was Nella Larson, like their lives were activists. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. um, and, and, and in essence, they, were, they became, these guys aren't just known for like all your famous black writers were in the field, so to speak, really doing groundwork, whether it was through teaching at an HBCU and, you know, so-and-so uh, -so teaches so-and-so and here, oh, what, you taught so-and-so, right? Mm -hmm. and, and your life was activism, right, opposed to people that utilize this fame from some type of uh, uh, niche they found and then became, fell into activism. That's interesting. And you're exactly right. Again, we go <laughs> back to what? Who is choosing these folks even to be in the academy that deem themselves the ones to present black history to us? But you got a tough task, man. And we all do. History. And that's why, you know, again, this ain't just what we do. This is who we are. So let us take another break and uh, we'll come back to you. It's the past and the professor. Little black Sambo grows up to be a lawyer. Extra, extra on the newsstands. Black woman voted head of Ku Klux Klan. Malcolm Little dies as an old man. 